Hello, I'm Maria Smith Bohannon, Assistant Professor of Graphic Design at Oakland University. The talk that I'm going to share with you today is titled Sustainable Design Thinking, Changing the Design Process, and I'll be focusing on a pedagogical process. Our world faces really complex problems today. Some of those problems include climate change, overpopulation, pollution, poverty. We have issues of inequality and food scarcity really an endless supply of big problems, all of which are inherently difficult to solve. As part of the planning process for a sustainable design course I plan to teach, I wondered, how do I guide my students through sustainable design thinking? How would that process differ from a client-driven process? And how would I expose students to these sustainable design concepts? The way in which most designers tend to approach a problem is to follow a five-step process, which I'll also be using with some modification. We all have variations on the way that we work, but most designers will follow one of the processes shown here. The creative briefs we use also have variations. They do tend to begin with a project overview. They define the target audience, analyze competition, and determine actions. The process and the brief that I plan to use would expand on this approach to include sustainable thinking. Students would begin by choosing one of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. These are the so-called wicked problems for which no simple solution exists. Solving these problems would begin to foster sustainable futures for all. The focus would be on the four established pillars of sustainable design, people, planet, prosperity, and culture. By bringing these categories to the design process and to the brief, it would allow for a more balanced approach to environmental and socioeconomic considerations. The process I've outlined here flips steps two and three. So first begin with research. The second step would be ideation, generating ideas and possibilities prior to writing and committing to a creative brief. The third step would be analysis, the step where the creative brief would be written. Phase one would allow for the complex problem to be understood from a macro view. So the questions to be asked would include, how does this problem impact people, the planet, land, air, water, and natural resources, in addition to economic and cultural considerations? Shrinking the problem to a micro view, one that fits within the lens of a local or a regional perspective comes next, asking, how does this problem impact my community and my world? And why is this problem so hard to solve? what has and what has not worked in the past. Phase two would be ideation and feasibility. This includes idea generation, determining how do we get from point A to point B, asking what the interconnectedness of things is and how feasible are these ideas? How likely are these solutions to be successfully implemented? Getting feedback and input on ideas would be the next step. For a human-centered solution to be successful, it's necessary to share your ideas with peer groups and with potential users. So we'd like to make sure these ideas are actionable and appropriate first. A sustainably focused creative brief would attempt to better understand the problem from a holistic view. So not only are we proposing a solution, but the solution proposed should work towards systemically solving the problem, even if the goals are small. A new category on the creative brief would be partnerships. Are there other professions one might partner with to create real change? So it might be necessary to seek input from a data scientist, a sociologist, or another discipline to get a wide perspective, seeking who brings added value. The first sustainable pillar on the brief is people. Seeking to understand the human aspect might involve determining how the solution would better one's quality of life. Is the solution rendered from an empathetic point of view? and asking if it's sustainable for the future and does it serve the greater good. The second pillar is determining the impact on land, air, water, and natural resources. Asking what the solution's life cycle might be, really understanding the making process, understanding the supply chain of materials and how much waste is generated. It would be important to weigh the pros and cons of both printed deliverables and digital applications. For printing, that might include evaluating ink, paper, and other substrates. For digital, it might mean avoiding energy-intensive videos and motion graphics. 
and instead choose static images and image compression. The third pillar is prosperity, and it should determine whether or not the project has potential for economic growth and well-being. Are fair wages for all involved? Does it contribute to the local economy? It should really be a balance of nature and human prosperity. The last sustainable pillar is culture, and culture should consider the implication of the proposed solution on culture by looking at contextual implications to society, implications to marginalized groups, and to local customs and beliefs. The creative brief shown here begins with an overview. It defines necessary partnership, it lists project goals and actionable items. The highlighted areas that you see, they bring about the four pillars of sustainable design, people, planet, prosperity, and culture, with the hope of achieving sustainable solutions. Thank you.